So this will be the second part to chapter two. This is about a couple of the terms that you find in the chapter, specifically absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Alone, I don't think people could really get a full understanding of the meaning of those terms, the way that, you know, just illustrated with uh, a definition or what's in the text. Uh, to really understand these terms, we have to look ahead to chapter 32, which uses a numerical example, kind of like I have here, to illustrate the, the real meaning of these. So what we're going to do today is kind of blending chapter 2 and chapter 32. Um, don't let that be too alarming. Uh, it's just really the best way to understand chapter 2, uh, the rest of chapter 2, an important thing, actually. Most textbooks would have all of this as chapter 2 or 3 together. It's a little unusual to break it into pieces. I think Miller did that because it is a tough concept, uh, what we're showing, and what we're going to ultimately show is that trade can make everyone better off, one of our 10 principles. It's a tough concept, but I don't know that taking the numerical example away from the terms makes it any easier. So I'm going to put them together, and at the very least, uh, at the end of this, you will understand the meaning of absolute advantage versus comparative advantage. So what we're going to do to make this happen is imagine uh, a world with just two people in it. Could be two societies. Doesn't really matter. Uh, one person is named according to me, Ron. The other person is named Sam. If these are a little hard to see, I've already adjusted the lights where I am. Uh, these are in my notes, that everything I'm saying is in my notes, so you can get a hard copy or open it up on another screen and see a, a, a written version on a PDF document, so it's nice and clear, uh, but hopefully you can follow along with what's here and supplement it with what's there. Um, so we have these two parties, Ron and Sam. And Ron and Sam could make either of two goods. Now, there might be other goods in their world, uh, but we're proceeding as if these are the only two goods in their world because that's what we're focusing on or what we're looking at is all else held constant, constant, the ceteris paribus assumption, all else held constant. So we're looking at these two goods and what they can do. Now, what's listed here are some production possibilities for Ron and Sam. Okay. Remember, our production possibilities curve illustrates the uh, quantities that could be produced by a party, right? And that's what I have here for Ron. So here, what I have is that Ron could produce 15 sausages, but that's only if he devoted all of his resources to producing sausages. And I know that because what I have here is that he could produce 15 if he didn't produce any apples. So if I were to work on Ron's production possibilities curve, and what I'm gonna use for these is fine, I'm gonna make these into a straight line. I did that just to keep it simple. Let's put sausages here and apples here. What I'm saying is that this is one combination that Ron can do. I would say, let's say that this is 15 sausages and that is zero apples. So that is this point right here plotted there. What if he devotes all of his resources to making apples? He can make a lot of apples. He could make 60. But that would mean making no sausages because it would take all of his resources to make 60 apples. So that should be about four times as far out as this was up. That might be here. That would be 60 apples and zero sausages. Now I already know I made this in a straight line just for simplicity. So I know how this is going to look. I could draw it now. But let's go ahead and fill in some other combinations that he might be able to do. He could make... He could cut back on his sausage production and make only 10. That would free up some resources. With those resources, he could make 20 apples. So 10 sausages and 20 apples would be something like here. Or he could free up some resources from making apples. If he were making only apples, he could free up about a third of the resources and make 40 apples. Getting up those 20 apples, he could pick up five sausages with the resources he has. So he could make five sausages and 40 apples, and that would be about here. So with these four points now identified, I'm gonna just draw in this production possibilities frontier. As I said, I made it a straight line for simplicity. So even though we explained everything about why it's curved in the, in the previous videos, and that's very important, set all that aside in your mind. It's true, it's important. 
the resources that go into apples and sausages might be, my marker's quitting, might be specialized, but let's just set that aside for simplicity. What I've done, and this is a little bit of a different way to present it, I realize, is I've listed here with my underlines, what I'm indicating there is these are, this is the combination that Ron actually chooses to produce of all these things he could do, of all the things he could do. By the way, there are other things in between here that he could do, okay? An infinite number of things if we divide the sausages and apples into, into uh, fragments. And so that's why this is a line. It's a combination, it's a uh, collection of all the points that he could choose to do, and he may only choose to do one point. This is what I'm suggesting he does. Because when you're in isolation, when you're working by yourself, you're not doing any trading, all you can consume is what you produce. That's what it is to be isolated. You're by yourself. There's nobody to get anything else from. So I'm suggesting that Ron likes a little moderation, but not too easy of a number. I didn't want to just pick like a simple you know, 10 or something like that. But I'm suggesting that he's going through life consuming 24 apples and nine sausages. And that would be about, let's say, nine sausages would just be below about two thirds of the way down, right? And 24 apples somewhere out here. About, let's say here. Right about there. That's where Ron is going through life. Okay, so if you notice, what I've really done is taken our production possibilities curve and just put it in numbers. This and this are telling us the same information, just presented differently. Let's do this for Sam. Sam, I, I'm, I can see I'm going to need more space than that, actually, because... Sam can make a lot of stuff. There's sausage axis for Sam, apple axis. Sam could devote all of his time, energy, and resources into making um, sausages, and he could make 30. Okay. He could devote all of his time, energy, and resources into making apples, and he could make 90. Well, this, this distance was 60. 90's clear out here. I could have done these on the same graph. Sam could do all these combinations in between. 60, 10. Well, there would be like 10. There would be like 60. So that's this one. They could do 30, 20. Uh, that's 30 apples and 20 sausages. 20 sausages would be about here. 30 apples would be about there. That's there. I'm suggesting he lives in moderation too, right? You don't want all apples, all sausages. So he has a blend. And he does 33, 19. So 19 sausages should just be above, just over about halfway up. And then 33 should be about a third of the way, a little over a third of the way to the uh, end of the apple production possibility. So I'm suggesting that this is what Sam does in isolation. So all I've done so far is taken some information presented to us in a table and I put it in a graph. I didn't, I, I went fast on this one because I explained it slowly over there. This was one point that could be on here. That would be like right there actually. Uh, this point is another one that could be on there, 60 and 10. That would be like right there. Suppose he did one sausage. Could he do 90 apples? No. If he gave up resources to make um, a sausage, he would have to take them away from making apples, so this would fall. Same over here. He can make 30 sausages if he doesn't make any apples. That's what this point is right there. If he wants an apple, he has to his what he has to give up to get it has a name, doesn't it? If he wants an apple, his opportunity cost is expressed in sausages. If he gives up, if he wants to get an apple from zero, he says, oh, I'd like an apple. The only way he can do it in isolation is to cut back on producing sausages. He can't make 30 sausages and have an apple because he's isolated and what he can produce, uh, what he can consume 
is what he can produce in isolation. So in the interest of keeping videos short and uploading, downloading time and things like that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording right here. And then in the next piece, I'll really get into those terms with this background in front of us.